this week on C Plus News Time. Ah yes, do you hear that? The sweet melody of some type of woodwind instrument. Or maybe those are strings. You know what? I've never been good at picking out classical instruments. You'd be surprised how often the subject actually comes about. It does too, Ron. Now shut up, I'm trying to make a news time. Right about here is when I'd introduce my thesis statement surrounding the topic of the episode. You'd think it'd be about music compositions, place, and comedy shows. And you'd be right. Good for you, Boo Boo. Music is way too important in half hours in today's TV world. I'm not going to write you a love song on news time. Why should I? Who made me king of anything? Be brave. I choose you to explore this uncharted territory with me. And uh, I ran out of Sarah Barella songs. Uh, gravity. I'm not good at this. It's C Plus News Time. Delivering to you the news you didn't know about the news you didn't care about, and the news you didn't know you cared about. With host, Chad White. Now, here's that host, Chad White. My German girlfriend recently broke it off with me because of my incessant pun work. It's okay though, she's basically the worst. Welcome back to C Plus News Time, I'm sorry. I'm your host, Chad White. This is the comedy news you didn't know about for the week of August 28th, 2017. For those who didn't watch my awesome but bare bones retrospective on The Simpsons 30th birthday back in April, you should probably go watch it. Uh, probably. I don't know. If you don't like me and if you don't like The Simpsons, then you'd be right to do so. Regardless, know that I'm a massive Simpsons fan. Not just the golden years. I love them all. You guys get Stark Warts or whatever that Yoder puppet is a part of. Why can't I have this? Now, as you may know, The Simpsons is 30 years old. This October, they'll be entering their 29th year on air. I'm five years younger than my favorite show. I wasn't even a thought when Matt Groening, Sam Simon, and James L. Brooks got together to develop the first season. I wonder if they think about me now. You're right, why would they? Why am I retreading a topic circling The Simpsons? The show has been making waves in the headlines as of late. In mid-August, cartoonist Mimi Pond told Jezebel about her one and only experience writing for The Simpsons. Pond's only credit was the premiere episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, in which the family received Santa's little helper. Guys, let me tell you, it was not a good experience for her. The writer's room for the show was heavily male and heavily white, but let's focus on the male part for right now. Pond was asked by Graining to write an episode. Curiously, she wasn't asked to join the staff of the show after it aired. Can you believe it was all because the showrunner was going through a divorce and he didn't want women around? It's true, and it's all right there in print. She would later note that bringing the family to the masses was a group effort, but it blows to be buried in a mound of crap like that. Now, surprisingly, this wouldn't be the only headline The Simpsons would generate in the past few weeks. Variety broke the story of the show's oft-used composer Alf Clausen getting the boot this past Wednesday. This guy worked on the show for 27 years, garnering 23 total Emmy nominations and winning two and scored over 560 episodes. Why did America's favorite family outs the most nominated Emmy composer? No one really knows. Some say it's because of the money issues the show has been having for years now. You probably remember Harry Shear's spat against the show, which was eventually resolved, and a decline in ratings isn't helping. Clausen's work reportedly costs so much because the show still uses a 35-piece orchestra, which Clausen has reported minutes before me shooting this that even the orchestra was fired, and this was all done by email. That's 22 episodes of 22 minutes worth of cartoon moments underscored by a group that's used to playing in a concert hall. Producers reached out to Deadline to state they will continue to use orchestral pieces for The Simpsons, but did not specify what capacity. Oh, and Clausen isn't completely gone. He'll still have some sort of role. We don't know. While this isn't a huge hit on the series, the music has long been what kept The Simpsons The Simpsons. That can be said about any show featuring an outstanding background sound. You say you don't notice that stuff? Yes, yes you do. Think about one of your favorite comedies. How every moment captivates you. You've seen the work, or rather, heard it. One of FXX's best offerings, You're the Worst, has quite possibly the best music in the game. Most shows have understated music that's meant to not intrude on the joke writing and character interaction. 
But once you break past the mundaneness of broadcast and move deeper into cable, there's a world of shows with good music. Adam Blau is the composer for the FXX series. In December of 2016, I had a chance to have a little chat with him about his work. Show creators Stephen Falk and Blau work closely in order to get the right sound for the series. Blau will ask Falk for the season scripts in advance and chart the songular moments prior to shooting. The creator is also adept at songwriting, so he can provide lyrics for a few songs as well. The composer will then throw a beat or a melody together for the actors so they have a rough idea of what they'll be doing. In the end, Blau told me he'd be able to go on set, which is not something composers are usually allowed to do, to see his work fit in with the scene. Blau did let me in on how he feels working for a show that veered into dramedy territory. He said Falk tries to make the show not feel like a common sitcom, saying, quote, For me, it's exciting to be able to actually put a fair amount of emotional depth behind something and to highlight some of the genuine tonal shifts that are in there. It's a little tricky because you want it to feel of the same world. You still grab from the same instrumental palette you have throughout so it doesn't feel like you're watching a totally different show. He added he tries to get the episodes early enough so he can confidently work on the music. Like when Gretchen finds out Jimmy's dad died. You can't go from slapstick to sad sack immediately. Blau used his skills to transition the scene from upbeat to gloomy. It takes a lot of talent to know how one can do that without jarring the viewer. Now beyond that, there are other elements of distinct musicality within You're the Worst. Characters have their own musical profiles, for instance. Take Edgar's PTSD-laden episode 22, which features a 70s-style song playing at various points throughout. The crew also tries to exalt emotional musical responses from characters that usually run away from those moments. In an interview with Huff Poe, Blau elaborated on the example, quote, I think it came out early on in the scene in the movie theater when they were eating Chinese food, when they started to click. It sort of plays twofold. It's a series of three descending chords, and over it you had a little da na na motif that plays for Jimmy and Gretchen. It's so hard to describe, but it has a sort of soft, gauzy sound. To those who think a composer on The Simpsons or any comedy series isn't as important as, say, an animator or writer, you're wrong. There are many facets behind the scenes that make a great show great. Art direction, editing, sound engineering, and yes, composing are all necessary to make The Simpsons and your favorite single camera show feel good to watch. This is going to be a new direction for the Yellow Family. It won't be as jarring as when they went to HD, but at least they want to change. And that's all the news I have for you for this week on C Plus News Time. Why don't you subscribe and check out one of our other videos? Of course, you can always head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where there's so much that it hurts my brain talking about it right now. How? You can also follow us on Twitter at C Plus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Listen to the Constitutionals podcast right there in your ear holes. And always, always check out the music around you. It sounds, it's, it's good. I like it.